front page of this week's Business Courier, Cincinnati's own fiscal cliff. Well, Cincinnati may be known for its hills, but it's our local fiscal cliff that has plenty of people worried right now. As one local political observer puts it, our cliff isn't as high or as wide as it is in Washington, but wondering how to edge or wandering out to the edge is just as dangerous, I should say. It all comes down to how a government deals with a financial mess. Does it cut spending or raise revenue? In his 2013 budget, Cincinnati City Manager Milton Dahoney floated money-making ideas he said were needed to close the city's $34 million deficit and avoid cutting hundreds of jobs that would impact city services. Among those ideas, privatizing city parking and eliminating the reciprocity tax credit. That benefits people who live in Cincinnati but work in another city with its own earnings tax. But the ideas have been planned by many council members or panned residents and business owners. Some city officials argue City Hall has reached a point where it must raise revenue or face its own dire cliff-like consequences. Business Courier senior reporter Lucy May wrote this story in our print edition. Lucy joins our editor Rob Dahlmeyer with more on what council members and others are saying needs to be considered to stop local government from going over the edge. Rob and Lucy. Brian, thanks. Lucy, thanks for being here this morning. Uh, so we don't throw words like fiscal cliff around lightly. Um, obviously, the big news nationally is what's happening in D.C. Uh, but you got a pretty clear idea uh, this week when you were reporting out this story about the city that, that they're really in a tough spot. Um, what is going to have to happen, according to the people running the city, to avoid this cliff? Well, when City Manager Milton Dahoney presented the budget to Mayor Mark Mallory and council members, he made it pretty clear that, in his opinion, the city's $34 million deficit couldn't be addressed by cuts alone. He said it would cut, um, three, it'd take cutting 344 city employees to, to close that gap, and he said that would just decimate city services. So that's why he floated these revenue-generating ideas um, that have been criticized by some, the, the privatization of the parking system um, and the reciprocity um, issue and that would raise a lot of money to, to help close that gap but um, but again they've been really those ideas have been really unpopular among a lot of people really quickly what was wrong with the privatizing of the parking according to critics what is wrong with just I mean, there was a ton of money that the city could get if they sort of farmed out parking to a private company. Yeah, critics have a variety of objections. One of them is that it, this, uh, this deal would lock the city into a 30-year agreement for basic what amounts to kind of a one-year fix of the budget. Um, the parking assets of the city do bring in money to the city every year, and critics say, why would you give that up to get this one-time cash infusion instead of finding other ways to fix it? The other concern is that a private operator um, would undoubtedly raise rates, that the private operator would be more aggressive in ticketing and booting cars in, in local neighborhood business districts, and neighborhood business district um, uh, business owners really worry that that would stymie uh, yeah. progress there. Yeah. It was, could theoretically scare away customers that's, the exact time you don't need to do that. Yep, that's what they so say. So what, um, what do council members say about this? Uh, obviously, so we've got, uh, Dahoney has been pretty aggressive about pitching, like you just said, these mm -hmm. ideas that we haven't seen before. But business leaders, residents, council, what is council? They have a problem too. Well, there, um, there are some council members who have a problem, and like I said, they say, why would we do something like this to, to fix a problem short term, tie ourselves into a long term deal? Other council members say, you know, it's time for the city to start thinking creatively. Um, the city's face deficits year after year, and every year the city manager comes up with these ideas to generate revenues and try to kind of close that gap. Council has historically been very reluctant to adopt these ideas. Nobody wants to pay higher taxes, higher fees, um, but they're a a lot of council members are now saying, you know, we, we, it's time to really start looking at this, just like in Washington where, you know, national leaders are saying we can't cut our way out of this mess. Locally, um, folks are starting to think that too. Final question, do you get the sense when you talk to council members that they see themselves as a part of a team or a part of a group that is trying to solve this problem, or do you think they act more as individuals who really, this is my idea, this is what I like, this is what I don't like, and so, you know, come along and follow me? Um, I think there is a sense of team on council. I think, um, you know, there's a majority that's really trying to work together. But at the same time, I think every council member is doing what they think is right for their constituents, what they think is right for the city, and there's not always going to be agreement on that. Right. Well, I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about this, and hopefully the cliff will just be a, a thought and not a reality. Right. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Lucy.